Hello, I'm so glad you could join me. My name is Pixie. I make videos about art and books. And today I want to talk about art challenges, being a disabled artist, and what I have come to realize in the past few months that that means for me. So let me tell you a bit of a story. Back in September, I saw this TikTok of an artist whose name is like Brianna or something, I think. And she was talking about how she was preparing for Inktober by like sketching everything in advance. And I was like, I always don't do, <laughs> I never do Inktober because I know my energy levels aren't going to be able to keep up with a uh, postable drawing every day. But I thought to myself, if I allow myself to do work in advance and maybe do some other things to adapt the challenge, maybe I don't have to miss out because I want to be included in things. I want to be involved and I want to do things that are fun. And so I came up with my own version of Inktober where A, I, I could do sketches in advance. I also decided to do 15 drawings instead of 31 and I decided to do my own prompts so I chose prompts that are all things that I have drawn a lot and know I can draw and enjoy drawing or maybe things I haven't drawn as much but have drawn before and want to draw more. Then in the middle of September my mom comes to me and she says do you want to go to Italy in two days? And I don't get a chance to go on vacation like ever. So that was a very like unique, amazing opportunity. And I wrote a pro con list and decided to go, even though I knew there was like a risk that it would take a lot out of me. And so we went and it was completely amazing and I can't bring myself to regret going even though I think the burnout I am in right now is uh, very much due to doing that trip. But the reaction I had was kind of delayed because when I first got back I like took a weekend to rest and then well I had stuff I had to do so I just had to set about doing them and I was running on adrenaline essentially but an empty tank and so the first week after I got back was the last week of September and then it, the first week of uh, October which was the challenge it was going pretty well and one of the days I even went to the museum to draw uh, an octopus there and it was really fun or a squid it was a flying squid but then it started really hitting and I was just exhausted and maybe I should have like quit the challenge after that first week. I don't know if that would have been wiser to do, but I <laughs> am stubborn and I really didn't want to like fail this challenge. So spoilers, I did complete it, but it took me a week into November as well before I did all my 15 drawings. But here's where I think I went wrong with this. Even though doing prep work in advance allows for some flexibility, this kind of challenge still presupposes some kind of consistency that my health does not have, my body does not have. And when I get exhausted, my ability to draw can be super affected because my brain's processing power kind of runs out and you need <laughs> processing power in the brain to be able to like uh, receive information, like visual information from a reference and sort of, well, process it and have some kind of output from it. Like there's a whole brain process thing happening that you don't really think about when it's not uh, such a drain on your energy. But when I am this tired, it really becomes very clear how much energy each part of that process takes. So I think in the future, a kind of art challenge I would be able to do is like a one-off prompt challenge, like draw this in your style type things that are just one thing. I think that's gonna suit me better because 
I do like the idea of having prompts sometimes. Things like TB Draw, which is, uh, <laughs> can I call it a series? I've done it like twice uh, on my YouTube channel, but it has been really fun. And so that's something I want to do again. But it's really hard to accept that you um, can't do these like consistency based type things because consistency is so highly valued in society. It's one of those things that I am working on learning to accept about myself because that's one of the more important realizations I have had in the past few months among all this that I haven't accepted myself as much as I thought I had and I really need to work on that. And what I mean by that is accepting my limitations specifically. I find it really difficult to accept my limitations. Again, partly because, I mean, society doesn't accept me. Like, we live in capitalism and I'm not profitable and all of that stuff. But also just for myself. Like, it means I have to miss out on things that are just for fun, that I just want to do. Like, even if everything I need was like provided for me and I had an accurate level of support I, I would still have to miss out on some things I want to do because they are so taxing and I, I have such a hard time accepting that I have to live a more boring life than I want to so yeah I tried to do Inktober because of my fear of missing out and what I learned is that I actually need to miss out on some things. One thing I did right with this challenge, I think though, is how I did my own prompts and I, I tried to optimize it for passion. And I think that was a really good way to like set myself up for success. And it's something I would recommend to someone trying to do a challenge like that is to set yourself up for success by giving yourself prompts that you love and are interested in. It obviously isn't going to do the same thing as following someone else's prompts where you get pieces that you wouldn't have drawn otherwise. But it depends on what your ultimate goal is. Like if your goal is to create pieces you wouldn't have otherwise, then maybe that's not the way to go. But if your primary goal is to do every day and like also film and post it, then I think it's a good way to help you accomplish that. What I will say for this challenge is that I think it did help me like lower the bar for kind of filming and posting stuff on Instagram and TikTok and hopefully I can transfer that to YouTube as well because I would like to make more YouTube videos next year but I'm not setting any official goals for that. It's just something that I think is really going to help. I'm going to get back to the no goals in a minute, but um, another change I made in the past few months in like the wake of these sort of realizations is that I deleted one of the tiers I had on my Patreon. So before I used to do an exclusive video every month and a sticker and a postcard size print. And then I also have a tier for commissions where after six months on a certain tier, you can get a commission. And uh, I think that's the only way I'm going to do commissions for the foreseeable future. But uh, a few months ago, I deleted the print prompt. So what I do now is video and sticker, and that's it. And I think this is really good. It has created more room for me to make some like weird art pieces that I wouldn't have allowed myself to make when I was doing prints because like these pieces aren't like postcard material, but they were like important for me to make. And yeah, I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to make them. Right now, as I'm kind of in burnout and having trouble even drawing, I'm not doing a whole ton outside of uh, what I need to. But I'm hoping when I have recovered and can draw more again, that it's going to mean that uh, aside from making the weird pieces, I will also have the energy to make more videos. 
because I think that's what I need to focus on. I don't think I'm going to open my shop again either for the foreseeable future because even though I went into uh, being my own boss and being an artist with the mindset that I'm doing this to be able to accommodate my disability, I was still hoping that I would somehow have all the spoons to be able to do a Patreon and a shop and do commissions and make all the free videos that make it worthwhile for people to support your endeavor and be invested in it and maybe even live stream and like all of that is just too many things and I have to accept again that I can't be doing all of that even if I see other people do it and work really long hard weeks it's not physically possible for me to do that. So I'll be doing the free content and I'll be doing Patreon. And that's pretty much gonna be it for a while. We'll see if I do like a pop-up shop with some stuff um, at some point. That's a uh, possibility. But yeah, we'll see. I will let you know. Anyway, about goals and not setting any goals. This is something that's new for me because I've been setting goals for the year every year since 2015. Because in 2015, I was about to turn 25 and I did not think I was going to live that long. But then I got there and was like, okay, well, since I am here, I guess I better make my life something I want it to be. And that primarily meant more creative. So I set some goals about... Uh, doing more creative stuff in my life and that was really great help for me in like and it changed my life but at this point in my life I need rest I need rest and I need joy and I can't make that happen with an itemized list like I'm not even setting a reading goal next year which is something I don't take very seriously and it's just fun like, I set my reading goal to 69 books <laughs> this year and last year because, funny number, haha, I am very mature. And I haven't reached it this year, so I changed it to 50 because I've read more than 50 books at this point. And it's just, it just has to be fine. But I want to stress that, like, at one point in my life, setting those goals was a kindness I did to myself. But right now, the kindness I'm doing to myself is not setting any goals. I need less demands, not more. <laughs> it's also like a big part of my self-acceptance journey that like not seeing myself as a fixer-upper <laughs> or renovation project and setting goals to like fix my problems. I don't have problems, I am fine. I am doing fine as I am and I am okay. And I can trust like my innate passion and drive to make things, to make things happen that I want to happen. Thank you for keeping me company and until next time, take care. Bye.